Um, we, of course, um, are in this moment where um, everything theoretically is on the table, and remember how good that worked out last time. But everything's on the table about what we do from here, about how we eventually get some revenue back into the system, how we start to pay for the uh, spending that has meant, and I, and I support all this spending, it's the social safety net that I'm proud of in Australia. But there's a few different suggestions around here, including one that was today in The Australian suggesting that uh, now is the time for us to think about increasing the GST, that the best service the National Cabinet can deliver is a raise from the GST from 10 to 15 per cent. We know the coffers are empty, national debt is serious, worsened by the pandemic um, uh, to act decisively and provide a more robust social and economic base for future generations. The suggestion being made uh, today by this opinion person would raise about $55 billion a year. Mm. Michael McCormick is the Deputy Prime Minister. Here is uh, his response to such suggestions. Would you be open to something like GST reform? I think the Does Expenditure Review Committee and the States will be having a, uh, a large say in that. But look, you know, we, we need to come out the other side strong. God, KG's a good-looking man. What about that posture? Now, that's how you sit on television. I just slouch like the fat bloke I am. But um, now, I want to go blank check to all of you here, and I'll start with you first, Gary. Um, one idea, doesn't have to be the silver bullet, but what is a big thing that we could be doing at this point in time that makes sure that the recovery is a V, not a wonky L? Well, Paul, growing the economy is the answer. And you can't tax your way to prosperity. That is a principle that we should not walk away from, Paul. It's not about back to the basics. It's about going forward with the right fundamentals. So we need less tax. We need less regulation. We need government less in our lives. And we need to get that small and medium enterprise spirit alive and kicking in this country. If we grow the economy, then whatever $100 billion of additional expenditure uh, we're currently spending or we're planned to spend uh, will not be as big a part of the economy. If the economy is bigger, it'll become an easier thing to tackle. The last thing we need to do, Paul, is to tax the, uh, the living daylights out of this economy to pay this off quickly. It's going to be around until the economy grows. Bigger, less government is the answer. Less regs, less legislation. Talking about that V versus the L, uh, here is uh, Josh Frydenberg talking about how he believed that that IMF suggestion about where we were and compared to the uh, depression, that that was a, situ uh, a situation that had all come, of course, before the JobKeeper payments, which essentially, he believes, gets us back into a better position that when the green light goes off, bang, we're racing. As the IMF a couple of weeks ago were finalising their numbers, it was before the JobKeeper payment was announced. And as you know, the JobKeeper payment uh, will ensure that many Australians remain in their jobs uh, and maintain that formal connection between employer and employee and won't be joining, joining those Centrelink queues. In the interests of fairness, or if you quickly need to go to the toilet, here's Jim Chalmers, the Shadow Treasurer. The Prime Minister shouldn't just assume uh, that the jobs market will miraculously snap back to normal on his six month time frame. Uh, we are very concerned, or we would be very concerned, if the Treasurer and the Prime Minister, uh, on the basis of that assumption about a, ten, a six month uh, snapback period, uh, ignores what will be a very difficult recovery for a lot of Australians. Oh, and I'm back. Oh, oh, that feels better. Uh, all right, uh, Corey, what's your idea here about uh, making sure that uh, it's a V, not an L? And what's some of the big ideas that basically we pay for everything that we've done to take care of that safety net? Uh, Paul, I'm going to go against you and the government here because I think what they've done is a sheer folly. It's going to cost us enormously. Uh, this entire corona coronavirus thing has been overplayed, overstated and over-dramatised. And just to put it in perspective, 23,000 people today died of hunger in this country. 140,000 people, more than the coronavirus, have died from the flu this year. And we've had multiples of the coronavirus victims die from malaria, all preventable, all uh, in excess of where this coronavirus has been. And we're not shutting down the global economy, destroying the future for our kids. So unshackle the economy. I agree with everything that Gary said, mm. but you've got to get people back to work and stop over-dramatising this, this threat from a virus, which will run its course 
before another version of it comes back in a year, two years, three years or five years like they all do. Just to be clear, before some uh, keyboard idiot uh, uh, yells at us, uh, the hunger figure, are you talking about global hunger figure this year or uh, that's the Australian... I'm talking about... If, no, mate, every single day, 23,000 people, or today, the figures today, 23,000 people have died from hunger today alone. Mm. Now, put that in perspective. We can oh, prevent well. that, but we don't because it doesn't affect Western economies. We could prevent malaria, but we don't because it doesn't really affect Western economies. We can prevent the flu, and in fact, we do spend millions of dollars and, and hundreds of thousands of visits preventing people from dying from the flu, and yet more people have died this year from the flu than they have from coronavirus. You've got to put it all in perspective. 500,000 people have died this year from AIDS, and yet you've got retroviral drugs for that. We can prevent it. Where's the outcry? Why aren't we shutting down the world because of this stuff? Pauline, uh, your ideas about uh, you know, the one big idea to either pay for things or to change some things structurally? It has to come from your taxation, but not the Australian people. I think they're taxed to the hilt in this country. And if you put up a GST, that means an extra cost to services and foods and everything that they buy, which they can't afford. Where we are missing out on taxes is from the multinationals who have come out to Australia. They use other countries around the world as their tax havens or they register their companies in other countries. So they're paying little or no tax there as well. Mm. So if you look at Virgin, they haven't paid tax in Australia for seven years, yet they had a, over a $24 billion turnover. If you look at the Ruby Princess, that has not paid any corporate tax in Australia because of the taxation agreement that the UK has, and it comes under the UK shipping uh, organisation. So that, not only that, if you look at the gas off the northwest shelf, we export about $54 billion worth of gas there a year now, and yet we only recover about $400 million in taxes from it. And Japan, they get more money going into the country, nearly $3 billion in excise tax going into their country than what we get. We don't even get that tax on our resources. Mm. The government has undersold us um, tremendously on our resources by the multinationals coming out here. We've got to get out of the 1953 double taxation agreement and we should actually charge the multinationals on a turnover tax of 3% on a turnover tax of their, um, of their turnover it's because they are, they are um, transfer pricing and they're actually shifting. Um, they, they claim back all the GST that they pay so we're making absolutely nothing out of these multinationals. They come down here, create a few jobs, use our resources, not paying their taxes here. Go after the multinationals is what I've been saying for the last 24 years. All right, uh, LJ, some ideas? Well, to be honest, they're all old arguments and we need something a lot bigger than that. There needs to be an accord with the Australian public. The government has just bailed a lot of us out uh, that needed it at our time of, of most need. And I think as an Australian uh, public, as a people, we need to recognise that when this thing is over, we need to do our bit to pay off the credit card. One thing is that we need to be quite realistic about what the recovery is going to look like. China, whether you like it or not, is going to be a big part of Australia's recovery story. Uh, look at uh, education exports. That is one of our... Uh, education is our second or third biggest export. That has been brought to a halt. Many of those Chinese students, just for one example. And I am going to give you an actual example, like the other three panellists didn't, by the way. I oh, think TST oh shots fired! <laughs> shots fired from the first reform. edition end! Look, I think the, one of the best things to come out of this crisis is the simplification of things, the speed in which decisions are made. Federation reform has been talked about for decades. Let's do something there. GST, yes. Increase the GST or broaden the base, but mm -hmm. it's got to be a quid pro quo. Listen to what New South Wales has been saying. Dominic Perrottet wants to get rid of stamp duty, uh, inefficient taxes like that, and perhaps uh, funnel or, or um, reorganise it into a better land tax. That is the best way. So not, you know, just raising taxes. I don't think this government or perhaps the next won't do that, but you've got 
to do it in a smart way. You've got to simplify things. You've got to get rid of some of those arguments that have hung around for decades. Well, this is the time to do it. Look at the Premiers sitting around the National Cabinet. They've laid their cards on the table. When they really want to change things and make decisions, they can. Now, we're not going to do a show fairness. Oh, come on, Laura. You're just sounding like you're doing your pre-selection speech for the Socialist <laughs> Left Alliance. <laughs> oh. Laura, that is the greatest load of lefty cod's wallet that's ever been what? broadcast on this, yeah. this oh, television that, network. You are rubbish. talking through your backside. What rubbish? That what? is total rubbish, what? Laura. Federation total reform. rubbish. Federation reform. Total rubbish. rubbish. No, you're you're talking about taxing us into I prosperity. Agree. You no, can't I didn't do that, say that. Laura. I didn't you are say naive. That. You've lived in the Canberra bubble for too long, Laura. Actually, you're I just a nasty little lefty. Canola, but that's it's okay. right. It's what people are saying on Twitter is right. You're a lefty. It's oh, stop simple. it. No, 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 don't, don't confess it. Don't say it. On Twitter, just I didn't think you listened to Twitter. What a lot of rubbish. Well, you know. What a lot of rubbish. Twitter isn't Twitter isn't real life. What's your big idea, Gary? I didn't hear you No, but it's it's been proved here tonight. No, that's been proved here tonight. What's your big idea? What a lot idea? of rubbish, Laura. You, you didn't have any, not You're, one big uh, idea. Anyway, I'll leave According it. to you, Laura, your big idea is to tax people more. What a lot of rubbish. Seriously, but, Laura, that's well, not credible. Well, how, well then what how, do we, how do we rubbish. recover from the inevitable duty, deficits that we're going to have like, here? By getting rid of stamp duty in New South Wales, for example, that would mean a billion dollars less a year in New South Wales no, coffers. That's not but, taxing but, people uh, out of prosperity. But what you, what you actually... Laura, what you actually inconveniently um, forget is that stamp duty is a one-off yeah. transaction cost. A land tax is a recurring tax. No government proposes to take off a tax or to redesign it unless it's going to benefit them. GST reform, they've been desperate for this for ages. We've seen governments do all sorts of outrageous things because they've been handed this power and the people of Australia, right. because of their goodwill and the alarmism that's been peddled by so much in the media, have gone along and signed it all up. And now we're talking about giving more power to government when they've delivered such a catastrophic mess over the last... How do you pay it's a disaster, Laura. How do you, pay you can't it do it. And don't... No, Pauline, you get the last say and I want to move on. Economy. Okay. Make it bigger. And don't... You... You talk about putting up the GST. It's the states that get all the money from the GST. So how is that going to pay down the federal debt? Yeah. It won't. So if you're going to get the GST exactly. increase, it more tax to the people, <laughs> straight to the states. So that's not the answer to it. As I said, there's a, a lot of other ways you can actually tackle this. Right. Well, Laura, I'm yeah. glad you're here.